we are going to discuss about the muscle power basic principle of muscle power testing is if you are suspecting upper motor neuron lesion like a pyramidal lesion we have to look for movements strength of the movements like flexion extension if you are suspecting lower motor neuron lesion then each individual muscle has to be tested separately that's a basic principle let us start the muscle power testing starting with the neck muscles we are going to test for the flexion and extension of the neck which can done the lying position and the sitting position so there is resistance given to his forehead and is flexing it against resistance and then extension again this is how we test for the flexors and extensors of his neck now we are going to test the rhomboid muscle for testing rhomboid muscle he has to keep his hands on the hips and then he is trying to approximate both his upper limbs backwards to meet each other against resistance that's how we look for rhomboid muscle then you are looking for his supraspinatus that is the first 30 degrees of abduction first 30 degrees of abduction is tested that by supraspinatus both sides then we are going to test his deltoid muscle next so keep the muscle at this range and try to push it down that's how deltoid is tested now we are going to test his supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle supraspinatus we already done infraspinatus tuck the elbow onto your waist and try to abduct it against resistance simultaneously palpating the infraspinatus muscle now we are going to test the serratus anterior so he is trying to push at a hard object like a wall simultaneously we look for winging of his scapula that's how we look for serratus anterior now comes the latissimus dorsi we go behind the patient and take hold of the posterior axillary posterior axillary fold with both hands fingers and ask him to give a cough and you can see how he is coughing latissimus dorsi can also be tested by lifting to 90 degrees and then trying to adduct it forcefully against resistance you can feel the latissimus dorsi the action of latissimus dorsi can be found out now comes the pectoralis major pectoralis major has got two heads clavicular head and sternal head now we test first we test the clavicular head by patiently putting his hands forward try to close it yes so that's how we look for the clavicular head now we are going to test for the sternal head keep the patient's arm like this and try to bring it for, together so you are looking for the sternal head and clavicular head now let us examine how to do for the biceps muscle in the supinated position he is trying to flex it and in this position he is trying to extend it that's what triceps muscle now in a semi pronated position is trying to flex the elbow that is why you are seeing the brachioradius muscle standing up now you are going to test for supination and pronation <coughs> so you are trying to supinate his forearm forcefully and then you are trying to redo the same thing you are trying to pronate against resistance and you can get the muscle now there is a hitch here when we test muscle power we grade 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so grade 3 is against gravity grade 4 is against resistance so if you put your hand like this and extend your elbows we are trying the testing the triceps muscle and it is eliminating gravity okay so it's a grade 2 rather now you keep it like this now you are extending your elbow against gravity grade 3 so triceps muscle is a bit tricky grade 3 grade 2 grade 4 grade 5 or you everyone must know how to grade the muscle power testing especially in lower motor neuron lesion this becomes important let us see how we test for extensor carpi radialis extensor carpi radialis is by against resistance he is moving in a dose flipped position he is moving radially same with extensor carpi ulnaris dose flexed and moving away now let us test the flexor carpi 
ulnaris and flesh carpe ulnaris no flesh carpe radialis that's right okay now we are going to test for the muscles of the thin eminence we have abductor pollicis longus he is lifting the finger towards the roof at 90 degrees and against resistance that's how the longus is tested now for brevis we have a pen or a pencil kept there and then he is asking to abduct against resistance the importance of this muscle is this is the first muscle to be paralyzed in case of carpal tunnel syndrome should never be missed now we will test his opponent's muscle he is opposing the and we are trying to resist it now he is going to flex it now flexus policies brevis is tested now ok now he is testing for flexor policy longus also now you are testing for his adduction adduction of his thumb to pull it out it is not going so adduction so we have tested now the abductor flexor extensor policy also tested now so these muscles are over now we are going to test his lumbricals and inrosiae they will be basically doing the extension of the interphalangeal joints and flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joints ok now flexor digitorum superficialis is tested at the level of the proximal interphalangeal joint against resistance it, the fingers are flexed and then we have flexor digitorum profundus where we test for the power of the distal interphalangeal joints now we ask the patient to spread out his fingers and see the power so the, this is for the abductors of the fingers and then you are trying to adduct his fingers ok now after finishing the yes hold my fingers this is for your grip this is no power grading for this grip you have said fair poor or good we cannot quantitate the power of the hand muscles now I am trying to pull out the papers from his and this is also the way to test the muscles. Okay. Now we will go to test the trunk muscles and then we will test the lower limb muscles. In this position the patient is asked to lift up his head and the trunk and you can see the power of the erectors of the back are tested. For convenience purpose we will do one more test for the gluteus maximus in this position we are palpating the gluteus maximus and also feeling for power of his extension of his hip yes, okay. we can also test the flexors of the knee joint in this position ok he will be folding both his upper limbs in front of his chest without supporting on the cot and then we will ask him to lift up himself this is for testing the abdomen muscle strength simultaneously I will be doing what is called B waist test if there is a disparity between the power of the lower part of the abdomen and upper part of the abdomen as in case of paraplegias the upper part which is powerful will pull the umbilicus upwards and this test is called as B waist sign so I am giving resistance to his forehead and asking him to lift up his head and marking with my hammer and I find that the abdominal muscles are not pulling the umbilicus upward or any other direction. So we have finished the head and neck, upper limbs, trunk, abdominal muscles. Now we go to examine the lower limb muscles. First we examine the iliopsoas muscle. The hip is flexed and you bring your hand just 
behind and below your knee joint and hold the thigh in the front and ask him to flex the hip. This is how it is for iliopsoas muscle. Now we are going to test the adductors. He is adducting his thighs. Now we are testing his abductors. Yes, we are testing for his internal rotators and external rotators now. Okay. Now comes the extensors of the knee. You can flex the knee and ask him to extend against resistance. Same way you can ask for flexion also. That we already tested it anyway. Right. Now we are going to test his eversion and inversion. Eversion basically by the peroneal muscles. So keep your big toes together, heel away and maintain that position and we will try to move it and do not allow. So he has everted it. Now just opposite, heel together and toes away. We are trying to close it and he is preventing it is called inversion that is also tested. Now we are going to test his dorsiflexors of his foot, yes both sides and then dorsiflexion of his toes, dorsiflexion of the big toe. Now the plantar flexion both sides, push it down, stamp down, okay that is fine. So, we have completed almost all groups of muscles. Now, to summarize, we have one more way to do it. If he can sit like this, we are testing L4 basically and if he is walking on his heels, that is a test for his L5 and he is walking on his toes, that is test for his S1. So, basically this is all about muscle power testing. So, we complete the muscle power testing here and the muscle power testing must be graded 0 to 5 except for the small muscles of the hand which is not tested as far as power is concerned, it is only grip. We say fair, good, poor or bad whatever it is, but there is no grading 0 to 5 for that particular group of muscles.